Hello, Red Raider fans. Welcome to Red Raider Football with Matt Wells here at the virtual Ruby's Country Store and Barbecue. Going to do this one last time this season here until 8 o'clock. Talking to football with the head coach of the Red Raiders. We will uh, be here until 8 o'clock. Also be joined by a couple of uh, stud sophomores and Tony Bradford and Sir Roderick Thompson. Looking forward to visiting with those guys uh, as they uh, finish up uh, the regular season on Saturday versus Kansas. Senior day, 11 a.m. at uh, Jones AT&T Stadium here in Lubbock. Our producer engineer mr steve pitts taking care of us as always and uh coach uh, wells now joins me and uh, man a wild one in stillwater uh over the weekend coach uh, 50 44 uh, on the wrong side of that one but still just a wild game and uh kind of take me through that a little bit and we'll move on and talk about other stuff yeah wild and weird a little bit chris yeah. i mean there was uh a lot of weird things about it but yeah wild um you know we took the opening drive and went down and scored um kind of up and down on defense the whole second half but kind of just hung in there and it was a, a 21 17 lead uh or deficit for us lead for them at, at halftime and we come out in the third quarter and play pretty good on defense and then and then kind of the weird part of the game started you know there was a seven minute run there with the clock that our defense wasn't even on the field and i'm guessing it was 30 40 minutes of real time and um you know that that was when the uh, onside kick got returned for a touch. We went pick six, but we scored on offense twice. And so really we kind of negated it. Now ultimately it hurt the team in the in the overall part of the game, but it, it didn't hurt the defense. Defense left uh, with a uh, four-point deficit, and when they returned there was only a three-point deficit, you know, and then it was a wild fourth quarter like you mentioned. And, uh, you know, I, I think the uh, synopsis for me is, number one, um, we're tired of being close. Uh, number two, we didn't come here to be close. Our players aren't aren't playing. We're gonna we're gonna coach to win. We're gonna play to win. And um, while we take no no satisfaction one bit in that, I do I do have a lot of pride in how our players are playing right now. I really do. The vibe, the uh, togetherness, the toughness, the mental toughness, uh, staying together, um, all three phases, uh, overcoming adversities. Uh, Injuries, season-ending injuries, COVID issues that we've had a couple, couple in the past weeks, and uh, and all of that kind of stuff. That to me is one of the most important pieces in turning around this culture is the fight with the players. And as we continue to develop them better, and we coach them better, and we recruit um, at a high level, which I believe we're doing a good job of right now, um, that's where you're going to see part of the change um, in the program. But the the biggest part for me is the locker room right now. And I think it speaks to that game comes down to a fourth and one at the very end. Yep. You guys get a stop right there. and, and, and maybe Fourth and one at 27-yard line. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And so you, you, your guys uh, fought. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, Sir Roderick. We'll talk to him in a little bit, but he had a big game. You, you guys ran the ball really yeah. well in general. I mean, you almost had two guys go over 100 yards. Yeah. Xavier had a really good game too. Speak to just the, the running the football part of it because that's a – when we talked about it in the last week, that's a really good Oklahoma State defense. Starts and up front. Yeah, they, they're just really good and yeah. old. Chris, they are. They are old. And I think they were one or two in almost every Big 12 defensive category coming into the game. And really proud. Again, it starts up front really proud of the O-line. Yeah. Um, didn't have their O-line coach. And how, how did that work? Uh, it, went, it went smooth. Okay. You know, Chris, this is a player's game. Yeah. Um, and I know we as coaches prepare them and we prep them and we inspire them and we're with them um, and uh, and we lead. But uh, ultimately, they're the ones that go make the plays. And players win games, players make plays. And, and I tell you what, my, my respect and hats off to that old line the tight ends, Koontz, Holbrook, um, Sir Roderick, X, Taj. And there was wideouts blocking for them downfield. You don't get those explosive runs. Uh, without wideouts and so but but really they did a great job of blocking movement that is an old big front and I'm proud of our old linemen I thought it was uh, probably their best collective game of the year um, you know Berger by far played his best game as a Red Raider Josh Berger the right right tackle just really proud of those guys uh, in the run game how did coach Farmer handle it when he finds out no, uh -oh. not good yeah, yeah we're, I, we're on radio here. Well, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and and, and he still, I guess, I don't know what the, the situation is, but Matt Clark, I guess, stepped in and kind of did. John uh, Canova and Matt, yeah, yeah they Matt, both helped. Okay. And you know, John's our our offensive GA, and and shout out to John. And John John's been with us for four years, so he's been with you know us, me and Yost and Farmer for four years, two here and two at, at uh, Utah State. So pretty seamless. Uh, but again, 
it was seamless because those five handled a lot of stuff. Actually, seven. We played seven guys. Those guys handled a lot. They communicated. Uh, we made a couple of adjustments. It was kind of awesome to see, really. Uh, I was proud of them. Yeah, and, and and that's been the theme of this season for so many people is the adversity that everybody deals with. Yeah. You're gonna get, you're gonna deal with some of these odd. odd I'm about to cough here. Excuse me. <laughs> that that's bad. It's a live radio. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, but everybody's dealing with you know just w- the weirdness of everything, and you don't know what what's gonna what's around the corner, and you, there there you go, and you're dealing with a. Uh, a, a, a position coach that's out, yeah. and that's a position coach that probably does more on a game day than 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 some would. Off you know? a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, one of your one of your stud freshmen, Loic, uh, Loic Fungi, yeah. big catch. Huge. Yeah, he hadn't played a ton this year. He he makes a big catch. Yeah, yeah, he's playing more and more as yeah. we go down the stretch. That's the sign of things to come. I'm guessing. Absolutely proud of him. You know, Loic's a young man from Midland Midland Lee High School. First of all, great program, Clint Hartman. Um, two solid parents, uh, great family, raised the right way, um, tremendous young man, worker, grinder, um, kid. The sky's the sky's the limit for him. I mean, we got we got some really good freshman skill on offense. You know, he he made his first touchdown catch, and he'll play more Saturday. You'll see him a lot more Saturday, and I'm happy with him. And but the rest of those freshmen, really, we and we got a couple on defense that are playing. I'm happy with those guys. Yeah, well, well I want to get into some of those freshmen, too, yep. when we return. Uh, we'll do that and uh, kind of talk about senior day and some okay. of other things. We'll talk about Kansas and all that good stuff coming up. Uh, Red Raider football with Matt Wells, presented by Rudy's Barbecue. We'll continue after these messages. This is the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.
Barbecue and uh, go see those folks over at uh, Rudy's. Uh, be sure to do that. Great barbecue starts with the wood, and Rudy's uses 100% oak to smoke their meats. Stop by Rudy's.com and place your curbside pickup or delivery order for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, okay, so senior day. These are always emotional, and, and you know, it's it's it means the last, last home game. However, this one is, I don't know, uh, we'll just – I'll just ask you, like, is this this is a got to be a weird one because it may not be the last game for a lot of these guys, but yeah. you got seventeen of them. Yeah. Okay. H- how do you approach that? Yeah, Chris, it's obviously not your typical senior day, just because of COVID, and I don't know if some of our listeners know, but um, because of COVID, the NCAA has allowed all of our seniors to come back and play next year if they choose to and be a senior again, and we're able to. Uh, to have them back and so those are conversations that we're going to have over the next four or five days really as they begin to kind of you know I think um, be smart gather all the information um, calculate where they're at um, with their future if they got a chance to go to the NFL if so where's it at Um, I'm gathering a lot of that information for them right now I think that's a big part of my job is to help them from an information standpoint and then uh, them and their families um, will go in and, and make good decisions my guess is that a decent amount, you know, maybe half. I don't know. Maybe it's, it's a little bit more. I don't know. I think we have a, a decent amount of 50-50 guys, and I do think there'll be some guys back. And um, So what we've done is we just said let's honor all of them. You know, they've deserved it. Uh, they deserve it. Let's bring them out. We'll give them a football, recognize them. They'll get to take pictures. It'll be a different senior day because their parents won't be on the field because of COVID, but they'll be able to get close to the stands and take a picture with them. And I think the biggest thing is just recognizing them um, for their years here, whether it's one year or it's five years. And uh, senior day is a big deal, and um, I want them to have it um, if in case it is their last game. And and in a normal situation, those are always emotional. How do you – and it may be in this case too, but how do you handle that as a coach? Like, because there's still a game to play. That's yeah. always what everybody always yeah. talks about. You go through these ceremonies, but yeah. we've got to play football too. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, is channel it in the right direction and, and use that emotion uh, to start fast and to rally the rest of the underclassmen around that we're going to send these seniors off Jones Stadium with the 4-2 and two record this year, and it is a big deal. You know, first winning record here in five years. I probably say it every day after practice. These guys know. And so I think you use that emotion and, and you channel it in the right direction. Now the thing is, is you know, football's a three-and-a-half-hour football game, maybe four, whatever it ends up being, right? And so that's a long time, and you can't let your highs be too high and your lows be too low. And we, you know, I always talk about, hey, if they score first, we have to overcome that and um and regroup and here we go but i think you just try to channel that emotion in the right direction i think don't think you hide from it don't think you run from it because it's real i remember my senior day everybody does everybody remembers their senior day um you remember the score you remember the feeling you remember that locker room uh for the last time and the thing that's not real typical with this one is probably there'll be a lot of them come back so not sure we're quite to that emotional stage yet to be honest with you so now we just need to go out and play really really good you have any kind of is there any mandated deadline on when any of that's got to be decided? I mean No, I just think it's I think you want to settle it in guys minds. Okay. Um, you know, when they go home for the break that that they know what they're doing and you know, they're going to look for an agent and they're moving to training and where are they going and how are they going to do it or um, they're you know, they're taking coach Schultz's workouts home for for winter break and they're getting ready to come back here. Uh, January the twentieth, and here we go with the with the off season and and getting their minds right in that way. So I think it's you know we'll I would anticipate most of those decisions being made, you know, pretty quick. Uh, yeah, and I think probably by the end of next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and with that, you guys after the after the game this weekend. First of all, I want to ask you. Somebody said, hey, ask coach if there's a chance. Uh, I think Kirby actually asked about this on his show today too. But is there any chance you guys go would accept a bowl bid because of the weirdness of the yeah. year? You don't have to be eight and two to go to a bowl game that they'll, yeah. they'll let teams 500 or even below. I mean, would, would that be something you guys I think there's consider? a lot of thing with those bowl games right now, Chris, it seems like they're up in the air. I've noticed a couple of them have just gotten canceled. canceled. Yeah. And I think COVID is going to, you know, it seems like it's kind of putting their clamps on that. And so I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, okay. that'll be Kirby will certainly entertain that. And, and we'll be in, we'll be in uh, constant communication. I mean, we talk Kirby and I talk every day, uh, but it'll, that'll be a little bit of a different situation this year. I'm not sure how that looks yet. Okay. And and obviously a lot of these injuries at the tail end of the season yeah. don't don't help your your situation no. out uh, there. So and, and with that, your your focus after this because uh, we'll get to the Kansas game here in a little bit, but your focus really turns to 
your your current team, but then your your recruiting class. Yeah. It's roster management. There you yeah, go. And it's, that's, it's all the same. That's that's a, probably one of the biggest parts of my job is is managing that roster with this year with an added element of the seniors being able to come back because that will probably affect, you know, getting certain old guys, like I keep saying, at certain positions. Um, you know, do we need transfers in a certain position? Do we need a grad transfer in a certain position? Do we need a junior college guy? You know, the other thing is that's kind of thrown in this in flux is the whole junior college, whether it's Mississippi, it's Kansas, California, some are moving their some seasons to the spring. Some are, yeah. yeah, and it's, it is, some are staying to play and then coming out in May. And, man, that, it's, uh, you know, you got the transfer rule that's going to, um, immediate eligibility that's going to be brought up in January. We all anticipate that to go through. Um, and so I'm sure that'll affect us in a little bit of way. We don't want to have very much attrition, um, but I think that's a that's a rule that's here, and I think it'll go through, and we will play in that. And I think the biggest thing is that we bring transfers in here that fit our culture and they fit our players. And like the two players that are going to speak today, I need guys that are going to be just like them. And I think for guys like that, there's a fit, um, and so we'll welcome them with open arms. And you know, the whole thing in the next really two months, Chris, is managing that roster. Um, our recruiting class is going really good right now. It's going to be a smaller class. We've talked about this just because of a smaller senior class. Uh, we have smaller numbers. And yeah, you have 17 seniors, and a lot of those guys may come back. So, so yeah, we have yeah. – and so, you know, we're going to sign a – um, you know, just short of a dozen, just a little bit less. I don't know exactly um, here in, uh, what, two weeks. And then um, some of the rest of those will be a few high school and a few transfers and a few grad transfers and – Really, it's going to be it. It's just going to be a short, uh, small class, and so we got to we got to be spot on. And I think we will be. We've I think we've shown our grad transfers that we've brought in here have have come and played and they've contributed and they've been great character guys. And they've been great guys in our locker room. We talk about Morgan Stern, Zach McPherson, Schooler, Berger, you know, all those guys. And there's there's more I know, um, but those guys have done a great job of blending in with these guys. And um, we find guys like Tony Bradford and Sir Roderick Thompson that care about this this double T. They care about each other, and they're, the vibe is good and the chemistry good, Chris, and they're really good football players. That's how you start winning internally first and foremost, and you got to develop. We need an under – you know, our program's built on development, and we need an uninterrupted winter off season. We need it bad, and um, we need a summer, and we need to go through and, and be able to develop these guys because that's such a big part of our program. There's a handful of guys I was going to ask you about uh, that I, you know, it's had some questions today that like, okay, what's, uh, how's Donovan Smith doing? Yeah. How's Derek Lewis doing? Yeah. Some of those guys that are okay. freshmen that haven't, that they're, they're some of the ones that aren't playing. So yeah. let's go through some of those guys. How's Donovan? I know he hurt his shoulder, yeah. but how he's a quarterback, obviously, uh, Coach Smith's son and all that. Went to Friendship High School last year, had a great year, but how, how's he doing and what's it look like for the spring? Yeah, for you him? know, first of all, let's put two guys in that same category. It's Donovan Smith, the quarterback. Uh, from Friendship, and then uh, J.J. Sparkman uh, from Longview Pine Tree from East Texas. Those guys both had shoulders in uh, August. They have been – I mean, they're around all the time. They're in meetings. They're in walkthroughs. They're visible. I mean, those guys care about ball. Uh, They're going to be limited. So, like, what we do is we put them in a yellow jersey in spring ball. They'll be limited um, in terms of running routes and full-speed contact, and Donovan will throw – probably won't take much team probably just limit him to one-on-ones and and uh, seven on seven but then he'll be those guys will be full go in the summer Derek Lewis is doing well um linebacker he is a uh, yep freshman linebacker LB Moore I think he's up to 240 what is he 242 243 we we ask him every day um and stretch um like Amarillo Tascosa another West Texas kid um, that kid's going to be a good player here, um, really athletic. You know, so they're, they're – uh, I mean, shoot, we're playing a freshman D lineman right next to Tony Phillip Blitty um, from New Mexico. And, Speaking uh, of lineman, Larry Moore, another Moore. He, he's, know, uh, he's been dressing out. And- you know, the, the, the development with Larry has been really good, Chris, over the last month to six weeks because we kind of brought him up from scout team because of some injuries. And we had some COVID issues on the O-line and, and some injuries. And so we got – Big Larry up, and he was really running with the twos um, for quite a while, and those are those are priceless reps for him. Still underweight, um, but he's growing, he's eating, and you know I've been able to take him on the last two or three road trips to eat. 
you know, <laughs> eat. And uh, all those freshmen, I mean, that's that's all they're doing on these road trips, and that's part of development. Yep. And um, you know, I think you know, I think Larry Moore, and then you got Caleb Rogers as the other freshman tackle, and of course he started the last couple games. He has started played left since, tackle played since game chance. one, and. Um, Kid's going to be a really good player. And you got a handful of uh, DBs too, like Kobe Miner and yep. Jonathan Davis. I mean, there's JJ Davis, Nate yeah. Floyd, Kobe Miner. Yeah. yeah. Um, those guys, I've seen them rise. In fact, we were talking about them in the defensive staff meeting right before I left to come over here, Chris. Um, just their demeanor, um, their uh, the way their confidence. They've gained confidence in practice. Again, some of those guys, especially Kobe. And um, Nate Floyd have moved up into the twos, like in our dime package and 6DB. So they've gone kind of from scout team over with the varsity, that's what I call it, um, and getting reps. Those guys, too, if we've been able to travel them. You know, um, and they're into it on the sidelines. I love it. I mean, Zach McPherson makes a pick Saturday, and you see on the on the video those three freshman DBs are all over it. And, you know, that's, that's part of it, you know, getting ingrained in our culture and in this program and uh, it's important for those for those young guys. Zach McPherson, another interception. I feel like it's rinse and repeat. I mean, that guy just <laughs> the ball need, just finds him, man. It's need it's a crazy. couple more this weekend. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, and, and you mentioned, you know, we were talking about Amarillo, Tuscaloosa, some of these West Texas. Yeah. How important is that for you to locally and just this area to for you guys as a staff to build? No question. Yeah, yeah. Well, speak to that. Yeah, I mean, I could I could tell you. Um, Exactly what I said at the press conference hasn't changed, and that was two years, two days ago, two years yesterday actually, two days ago when I when I flew in here, and uh, which was an awesome moment for me, and our staff, my family, and um, the focus hasn't changed. It's Lubbock, it's West Texas, then it's the state of Texas, and then we'll branch out. And when we branch out, we'll go up into Oklahoma, go into New Mexico, um, we'll go anywhere really that there's an interest in tech, but that primarily, and then obviously we're getting grad transfers and transfers junior and college guys anywhere. But to, uh, you know, West Texas is our backyard, and I say west of Fort Worth all the way to El Paso and all the way up, you know, to the top of uh, the Panhandle, um, all the way past San Angelo into some small towns I don't even know yet. But uh, this, is our, this is our territory, and, and we've taken great pride, I think, you know, last year, you know, we I know we've taken um, two from Wellington, Landon Peterson from Odessa, Loic from Midland Lee, you know, LB we mentioned from Tascosa, Donovan from Friendship. Um, can't talk about them, but we've got some committed in West Texas this year. And um, this will always be where we start. We always start here first and foremost. You know, this year's been a little different only because the numbers have been really limited. And sometimes there's there's good players, Chris, and you only have so many scholarships, and um, there's there's good players. West Texas has really good football players. I think they're tough. I think they're tough-minded. Um, it's going to be the backbone of us turning the program around here, and I do believe, uh, you know, there's there's more 21s and there's more 22s that we're, uh, you know, we're knee-deep into recruiting right now. There you go. Well said, Coach. Uh, we want the defensive lineman up here. He's been in here patiently TB. awaiting. Yeah, yeah TB. Uh, Tony Bradford will join us uh, when we return, so we'll do that and talk some uh, football with uh, one of the defensive tackles for the Red Raiders. When it comes to irrigation and house wells, trust the only product designed by and built for West Texas for 67 years. Ask for Simmons Pump and Supply or visit SimmonsPump.com today. Red Raider football with Matt Wells, presented by Reader's Barbecue. We'll continue after these messages. This is the Texas Tech Sports Network from Clearfield IMG College.
Better Football with Matt Wells back here at the virtual Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. We've been at uh, on the campus of Texas Tech University all season for this show. Can't wait to get back out to Rudy's next season, Lord willing. Uh, and so we'll be here until 8 o'clock and uh, talking some football with the head coach. And uh, please be joined now by uh, sophomore defensive lineman Tony Bradford from North Shore. You're the North Shore's finest, yes? Yes, sir. North uh, Shore that, Senior High, okay. part of Houston, Texas. There you go. <laughs> So you and I were just talking. Uh, you're big. Uh, so you rep the city of Houston, right? Absolutely. Okay. North Shore, big, big, uh, big program. Ro your Rockets, your Rockets Texans fan, huh? And Absolutely. the Rockets just made a big trade. A little disappointed in it, uh, but you know, <laughs> if Russ is happy with it, then I'm happy for him. <laughs> yeah. So those that don't know, Russ, Russell Westbrook just got traded to the Washington Wizards for John Wall. So you're not a John Wall guy. No, no. <laughs> See, there, I, that's what I always appreciate. You, 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 football players always pay attention to basketball, and basketball always pay attention to, to football. That, that's always fun. So, you a Texans fan too? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. You disappointed in their season? Um, they've been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, they, yeah. they've been fighting their COVID issues and coach issues and everything like that. So, yeah. I mean, but. We'll be back next year. <laughs> there you go. I like the positive spin on it. Okay, so 22 sack tackles this season. You, you felt take me through your year so far to this point before we play the finale on Saturday. You've had a good good year. You think? You know, I'm um, I'm grateful for the amount of reps and the uh, you know the amount of production that I that I have had this year. I think I started off kind of slow with the production. Um, you know, Coach Wells used to tell me before in practice, production, production, production. You know, and I took that seriously because I'm like, you know what, I do need to. I do need to do a lot more for this team and uh, for the defense to help out and stand out. And so I think I just what I decided to do is just change my practice ways and my practice habits and just pick up the tempo and energy in practice because I feel like if you practice hard, then you'll play hard. And if you're playing hard, then you're bound to make plays. The, bound, the ball is, is bound to find you. Do you have a bond kind of with uh, Jalen a little bit? You guys same – I mean, yes – yeah, me and Jay Bug, we cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we cool. Because <laughs> he he was he was in here uh, I don't know a few weeks ago, and uh, you you guys are really remind me of great personalities. You're, you're great student athletes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're kind of heart and soul a little bit. I mean, it, take me through the bond that you guys have lining up next to each other, and you know, you got got a lot lot left ahead of you too here. Right. I, I mean, one thing about us is that when we're in the same room together, it's not going to be negative energy. Uh, we want to put a smile on everybody's faces. We want to let let everybody know in the room that you know it's a blessing to be here. <laughs> it's a blessing to be alive. So smile about it. We're going to make you laugh. We're going to make jokes, you know, when it's the time and place for it and everything. And um, we we're, we compete. You know, we talk trash to each other. Um, <laughs> tell them all the time with me and Tyree. I tell them, like, I'm going to make more plays than y'all this weekend or, you know, the day of the game. And it's as simple as that. So, I mean, yeah, we have fun, but we, we compete as well. Co competition yeah. always brings that. What made you always like the positive part of it and the outgoing part of it? You've always been like this? Yeah, I've always been like that. I mean, I feel like. That's the only way you're gonna make it through, cause <laughs> football can be stressful. And you know, if you're if you know you're up early in the morning, and so it's no sense of coming in with your eyes all down, head down, looking sad, feeling sorry for yourself. You know, so I try to win, lose, draw, whatever the case is. I'm gonna keep a smile on my face. I'm gonna keep the same energy going. I'm gonna keep positive in my locker room. You know, to let those guys know, like, hey, we still got a chance. We still got a chance to do something great. So why not? See, there's a lot of young people need to hear hear that. Uh, lot, you know what? Old people too actually need to hear your 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 message right there. Um, yeah, I I uh, talked to you back uh, in the middle of uh, I think we were close to still being somewhat shut down and all that. You were on our radio show here locally, and you you had done some stuff with the Texas Tech Police Department in the spring, I think. Mm -hmm. And you you want to this is what you want to do? Do you ever get tired of talking being asked about that about you want to be a police officer no. whenever you're? I okay. mean, I'm proud of it. Yeah. I mean. That's that's honestly what I want to do, okay. you know. After football, and I'm 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 sticking with it, and if God willing, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. What, what, and and t t the backstory there, like uh, with with why you wanted to do that, is what. It's just been a lot of stuff. Obviously, that's been going on in the world that I'm just like, you know what, it, it needs to change, and I feel like change is only gonna happen if you know more people of color and stuff, you know, become police officers or become lawyers and judges and stuff like that. And so I feel like. If you want to, if you want to make change to happen, then you have to be the change yourself. There's no sense in just saying what you want to see if you're not gonna willing to put yourself in in that situation to help make it happen. Yeah, well said. Um, okay, so real quick, so we're gonna get Sir Roderick on here. What uh, do you like trying to tackle him in practice? Tough, tough guy to tackle. Tough yeah, guy to bring we, uh, down. 
It's not tough. He just got <laughs> oh, <laughs> smack we, talk right you know, there. Yes, <laughs> got to keep him healthy. So we do dud him up. Okay, uh, so he feels me when he comes through. <laughs> now this Saturday may be a little chillier than than normal. Last Saturday was just somewhat chilly too. Now being from Houston, you you okay with the colder weather in football? You know what? I don't like the cold weather. I figured that was what you'd say. I, I, I really don't. It's cold out there. It's cold outside right now. I mean, I'm just not a fan of it. But when you're playing football and stuff like that, you just got to deal with it and. You're not, you're not thinking about it in the middle of a play, so. You like the 11 a.m. games? Oh, yeah, I love it. I, I really do. I like. I don't like sitting around in a hotel waiting all day, you know, to, to get started and, you know, trying to get my mind right for I like waking up uh, already dressed down for breakfast and everything ready to go. Tell me about Kansas real quick before we let you go. Like, what do you expect uh, to see out of them? What will they do? try to do to you guys offensively? I expect them to. I feel like, like, like uh, Coach Wells said in practice uh, earlier this week that this is their Super Bowl. I mean, like, they're trying to win a game, you know. So um, I expect full effort from them, no matter what. Um, I feel like they're going to try to run the ball hard and try to pass and do everything that they can, maybe with some trick plays and everything like that, hard count and all that. So, I mean, I'm not expecting them to hold anything back. Why would they? Coach, we'll speak to this guy right here. This is a very impressive young man. Yeah, he's yeah. one of the first guys I saw when I became the head coach in here and, um, you know, went and uh, saw Miss Laterra at, at her grade school and North Shore High School, which is a great, great program down there. Coach K does a great job. But uh, Tony is what you see is what you get. This this is uh, this guy's the real deal. Um, he's real in the locker room. He's real in the community. He's great in school. Um, he's everything we want in a student athlete. But uh, he's everything I want in a leader. He needs in to the be a motivational room. speaker. Yeah. Well, you know what he does is he's just all he's doing is revealing what's inside of him. I mean, if if anybody's bought into our process and our preparation, it's the two guys that are. That are going to talk, you know, tonight on on this show. But these guys, they, the way they come into the building every day and they go through our process about how we lift, how we train, how we eat, getting ready to practice. When it's time to go, we go. They know when, if, you know, when I back them off, they they trust us and back them off. When it's time to ramp it up, they ramp it up. But I think what you just hear and what you'll hear out of Sir Roderick is is right from their heart. They both have been raised, both got great moms, and they've been raised the right way and. Um, um, I think we're we're really lucky. They're both Red Raiders, and they're really good players, man. And they're yeah. going to be here for a few few more years. That, that's uh, that's a good thing, man. Yep. Tony. So, last question: What, what do you want for Christmas? It's oh, December. Man. Yeah. What, what does Tony Bradford want for Christmas? I don't think I want anything. Um, actually, I want to go home and do a lot with my little brothers and stuff. I mean. I know you they're they're probably answer. listening right now, so they're probably gonna be asking. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I just want to go time, go back home, spend time with my family, and you know, take care of them because I mean, I haven't seen them in a while, so I'm, I'm excited you. to to go back and you know, hang out with them. Hey, be healthy, okay, and uh, have a good uh, game on Saturday, man, and uh, keep doing you. Yes, sir. Yeah, there he is, Thanks Tony, for having me. Tony nice Bradford, absolutely, Tony Proud Bradford, right there. Uh, Red Raider football with Matt Wells, presented by Rudy's Barbecue. We continue after these messages. We will have Sir Roger Thompson up next. This is the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG.
for Ritter Football with Matt Wells back here at the virtual Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. B Equipment Sales is the go-to construction company uh, equipment dealer in West Texas. Call today or go online at beequipmentsales.com for all your equipment parts, service, or repair needs. Make sure you check those folks out. Now, pleased to be joined by uh, sophomore running back Sir Roderick Thompson. Uh, big game uh, on Saturday. You had a, you had a nice one. Uh you're smiling, yeah. I mean, let's see here. 133 yards, had a couple of touchdowns. Feel, felt pretty good about that one? Yeah, it was pretty good. <laughs> now, don't don't be shy on me here. Don't I mean, be shy. Don't be shy. So, when you're, you're let's see, 59-yard touchdown, you've had a couple of long runs. Have you ever been in a position, whether in high school, college, where you're busting off one of those long runs and you look up on the board, if, if possible, and see if anybody is right behind you? Have you ever done that? Yeah, all the time. If if they got that big old screen out there, yeah, I'm definitely looking at it. Like, I was looking at it um, on the long one. That's why you see me curving around because I saw zero coming. <laughs> see, there you go. So, you, using your resources. Using yeah, you your resources. Yeah, okay. Um, what, what's, your, what's your season been like uh, so far this year? You guys uh, running the ball really well right now. We were just talking about that with Coach. I mean, and, and Xavier's doing well. Taj is doing well. And you're, you're, you're getting your carries. I mean, kind of take me through the, the run game in general. Uh, I I think the running game is – amazing because like like you said we got so many people that's like doing well and like so many people can just come in and contribute to the team and give a different aspect to the team like because with me I mean I do some good things and then with X he's just so fast and shifty and then he can make plays he can he can make plays in the receiving game that probably I can't or Taj can't make and then when Taj comes in the game he just he's a little short he's 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 a short down back we hate to say it but like he's he's killing his role like he's doing, he's doing everything right. Yeah, red zone touchdowns and some things like that. And then, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Chad, no, Chad Townsend. Yeah, Chad. Yeah. yeah. Chad, he's just, he's just so fast, you know. Like I, I haven't seen a, a guy faster than Chad, like since I've been here. And like he's, he's really explosive, and he's a great guy. I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> he's a great guy. <laughs> what, what? Uh, okay, so Xavier switched from like inside receiver to running back back. I don't know months and months and months ago. And then Taj comes in here as a true freshman. How do those guys look at you, or what can you do to the, for those guys to help them with this position of, of running back in this offense? Uh, well, Taj Taj picked it up real quick. Like he picked it up like the first week, kind of uh, like summer ball. But like I was just, I'm just here to just give out give out uh, <laughs> advice. Uh, yeah, and, give out advice. Yeah, yes. and, like because right now I'm the old head in the room, and I'm the same age as them, pretty much. You know, because I'm. I'm the oldest guy in there. I've been there the longest, so okay. if they ever need anything, I'm here for them. What did, what did you know? Is, is Xavier switching <clears throat> from one position to the next? What what did what was his biggest? I don't know. What was the hardest thing for him that he had to come to you on and like, hey, here's what you need to do here. This is different than than playing receiver. Uh, probably just like, or is he just playing football? I mean, he is just playing football, but like probably just the um, he was a high runner when he first got like when he first switched over. So just like trying to get his pads down pads lower okay. and just and things like that, is, that was probably the biggest thing. Do people understand? Like everybody wants to talk about you carrying the ball, right? But do, do people understand how big of a deal like pass pro is for for you guys? I'm guessing Coach Smith is like, hey, if you can't handle that part, I don't care how good you can carry the ball. If you're gonna get our quarterback hurt, you can't pick up a blitz. Speak to that for for like young kids out there wanting to play running back. How big pass pro is? Pass pro is extremely big, especially in this offense, because like we got we got some protections to where like sometimes we got to pick up those big guys up front, and we got to be we got we got to be as firm in our um, technique as we can just to slow them down. And then a lot of times we have to read we have to look at blitzes and dissect those too. So that's the biggest part. Um, you had a you had a bit of a, I think you got you dinged up your ribs like a month ago. Is it true that you know I've never had a rib injury, but when you sneeze and everything, does it hurt as bad as they say? Yes. Cough, sneeze, see, one hundred percent painful. Yeah, yeah, painful. But you, you're you're on the right side of that now. I, I was gonna I asked you about this in the break, but I remember last year Coach Wells and his staff had just gotten here. It's one of the first games last year. We've heard about this tempo, gonna go really fast. We don't want to let the other team sub. Stay in there. And you, it was one of the first games, and you're out about 40, 50 yard line, and you're like, you're you're tapping the top of your helmet, tired. You know, you'd already ran six or seven plays in that drive, and and the guy sitting next to you said, "Stay in there, stay in there." You persevered. You ended up scoring the touchdown on that drive. 
did that right there kind of show you I can achieve more? I, I maybe mean, I wasn't as tired as I thought. I mean, take me through the lesson that you learned now from now about two years later, basically. Um, well, first of all, I was definitely as tired as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> truth, but, um, truth teller, I like that. But um, it just it just made me like more aware that like I like coming into this year, I knew that I had to be in the best shape. I can be in just because I know that we're going to go fast and we're going to we're not subbing in, in the red zone or anything like that. So it just that's that's pretty much the biggest thing it did for me. Just keep me in the best shape I can be. So it's, it's but it's mindset, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you like uh, do you like that? I was asking Tony that you're from you're from Irving now. Do you like the cold weather games? We may get one Saturday. Not, not at all. Not at all. Not yeah, at but, all. but you'll 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 just yeah, tough I it up. I hope I got guys to show up. Saturday. Yeah, you just I tough mean, it up. Though. You ain't got to worry about that. Okay, you ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> Eleven a.m. game. Four, do we like four that? Will show up. Yeah. Uh, Eleven a.m. games. I love those. Yeah. It get it just gives me opportunity to just wake up and ball. So you don't have to wait around the hotel and all that. Yeah, and, yeah. I get sleepy. Yeah, I got you. I got you. What uh, What can you tell me about Kansas real quick? What defensively? What will they? What, what have you guys prepared for this week? Uh, we just prepare. We just prepare for like pretty much anything because they they can come out of anything right now because like they like he like Tony said like he said this is their Super Bowl so we're we're expecting a lot of pressure and and them playing them trying to fly around and all that. Do you feel a level of uh, responsibility too as a as a sophomore for those seniors that may be playing their last game at home and last game in general to try to send them out on the right note or is that my overplaying that? Nah, it's, like we're a family, and we always want to send family out on the right note, and we want to do everything we can for those guys because those guys they they've <laughs> they've put so much time and invested so much into us, so it's just it's only right that we do that to them. Coach, speak to the competitor. This guy is—he's just telling us in the break he's frustrated because he lost the video game earlier. But speak to the competitor. He is. Yeah, he competes at everything. I, I think he's one of the best competitors we have in the program. Um, he's also a great teammate, and so he's not the competitive guy that um, you know can't get along with teammates, defensive guys, offensive guys, even guys in his own room. But just—I'm uh, sure that's probably how he grew up. Um, usually, those competitive um, genes or the competitive nature is. Uh, uh, nourished at a young age and um, you know I think uh, this football here in college uh, brings it out but you know Sir Roderick is a competitive guy whether it's you know off season it's running it's the video games we heard about I mean he's always competing and um, you know I, I, I respect that I need guys that want to compete and they love ball and he does he's just like Tony man he, he's bought into our process I mean, he's bought into the weight room things that we do um, he's a football junkie. What, he was not that when we got here, um, but he's he's developed that over time. I mean, he's in coach's office um, extra, and, and um, you know, he talked about that, the pass pro and the blitzes. That doesn't come natural. It doesn't come easy for these guys. I mean, and really, quite frankly, a lot of high school backs don't have to do that in a lot of ways. Um, but these guys have learned, and it just, I think, shows you how much they care. Um, it also shows you how smart they are. They're smart. They're smart. We got smart backs, um, but they care and they're they know they need to protect the quarterback too. Hey man, 133 and two touchdowns on Saturday. Let's do that again. Yeah. Hey, definitely. absolutely. Hey, well, stay healthy and uh, enjoy enjoy the game on Saturday, man. Appreciate you being on with us today. Okay. All right, there he is, Sir Roger nice Thompson. Job. Good job right there by Mr. Thompson. Red Raider football, Matt Wells, presented by Rudy's Barbecue. We continue after these messages. This is the Texas Tech Sports Network from Deerfield High College.
Bridgewater Football with Matt Wells back here at the Virtual Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Just uh, here for a few more minutes. Uh, Coach, let's talk about this uh, this Kansas team real quick. Uh, they played a ton of guys, a lot of freshmen. Odd to try to get ready for a team. You're not real sure exactly who's going to play, and they played a bunch of quarterbacks and just kind of take me through that dynamic. Yeah, and you do see that um, a lot, Chris. You know, I, I think uh, – you know, what's hard to, to look into a program and not really know is just 2020, man. I mean, like how much COVID have they had and have they had to change lineups because they've had so many guys around? Is that the reason why? And we certainly have. I'm sure they have too. And so, you know, offensively, you just prepare for their system. And, and uh, you know, you, you see the quarterbacks, so, you know, played all three of them Saturday and uh, what they do and what they do well and what they do different with them in. And, you know, the first two, it doesn't uh, it doesn't change much. And then, you know, defensively, they're going to pressure um, in certain places in the field and, and, and try to get after you. And they've got good skill. I tell you, they, they got good skill. You know, shoot, we saw them last year. Um, and uh, we struggled in the back end. So it's, uh, it's a major challenge for our secondary. We have got to, um, you know, we got to be on top of vertical routes. We really do in the secondary. And uh, we've got to be able to run the ball on offense. You preparing for multiple quarterbacks to play? I mean, Jalen Daniels, Miles Kendrick, both potentially going to play. Yeah, just you know, I do think they change much with what they do. Not, not okay. much. Okay. Uh, I, again, I th- I think you just prepare for the system um, and what they've done with with both of them, and um, certainly you saw what they did last week, and and um, I think you just kind of game plan off that, and, and whoever they play will will uh, will line up. And thing is, is it's all about us. You know, we, we need to get aligned. We need to play with tremendous effort and tremendous intensity. We've got to tackle well in space, and we've done that the last few weeks on defense for the most part. Um, I think we got a little loose in some of those run fits in Stillwater, you know, late in the third quarter, early in the fourth, where we struggled a little bit. But um, for the most part, we have been tackling pretty well, and we're going to need to do that Saturday because they do have very good skill, uh, especially on offense. Defensively, do they do they do anything unique? Do they pressure play a lot of man? I mean, like you saw a lot of man last week. I mean, certain they, areas, yeah, certain yeah. areas, certain field zones, they'll play more man and uh, want to heat you up and 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 want to pressure you. And then uh, they certainly, you know, base out of quarters and um, cover four and you know a mix of of zone and man. Well, I have certainly enjoyed sitting here with you each week, man. This is uh, th- these went by fast. Yeah, they did. We were just glad we got to do the show, have the season. Shockingly, you, you knock on wood here, but you, you haven't had any issues with the season and and played all the games. But certainly appreciate you being kind with your time and and being with us all. I'll see you hopefully next year we're at uh, Rudy's and hopefully we're back us. there. Absolutely, yeah. have all those fans back out. Yeah, Red Raiders. That'd be great. Yeah, and, and so before we get out of here, thank you to, to those folks over there, and you can stop by there uh, uh, and, and, you know, just, just check them out, man. They do a gr- great job, and we, we certainly appreciate uh, uh, Ru- Ru- the folks over at Rudy's and uh, appreciate you, Coach. And so with that, Thanks, we'll, uh, we'll wrap this thing up. But it's been a fun season of uh, Coach's Shows uh, here from the United Supermarket Arena, but uh, we've called it the virtual Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. So that'll do it. Uh, studio board op has uh, been Shelly Kofsky, producer and on-site engineer, Mr. Steve Pitts. This is Chris Lovell for head coach Matt Wells, reminding you to join us for the Red Raider Tailgate Show Saturday, December the 5th at 10 a.m. The Red Raiders and the Jayhawks at Jones AT&T Stadium kickoff is set for 11 a.m. This is the Texas Tech Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. <laughs>